the nation's favourite antiques experts. I just love it. Behind the wheel of a classic car. It's fast. It's a race. And a goal to scar Britain for antiques. Could be tricky. That's the aim. The aim? To make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. Oh, high five. There will be worthy winners. Mind blowing. And <laughs> valiant losers. Could have been worse. Will it be the high road to glory? Oh! Or the oh! slow road to disaster? Oh no. This <laughs> is the Antiques Road Trip. Dig that. Beep, beep. Where's the horn? Beep, beep. Oh, I like that. Park. That's definitely the sound of antiques experts cavorting in the countryside. And our new man, Tim, great name, Medhurst, is behind the wheel of our delightful 1979 MG Midget. It's quite a friendly car, if that makes sense. Yeah. You kind of feel like if you owned one, you could become quite good friends. Does that make sense? No. Oh, OK. <laughs> Sitting cosy in the passenger seat is a rather giggly Christina Trevanion. What? <laughs> And our duo are off, meandering the lovely southwest counties of Somerset and Devon before crossing the Welsh marches for their final auction in Cardiff. But how does our novice think he's doing so far? I made a bit of money and I lost a bit of money, mm. but overall, I didn't lose. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting with more than I had last time, I... only very marginal. How Martin. much are you starting? About £3 something. <laughs> it's true. After starting out with £200, Tim did make a teeny weeny profit and sets out this time with £203.36. Whilst Christina also set off with the same amount, but fortune smiled upon her, earning her a new budget of £389.84. But it's a brand new day, and who knows what will unfold. Somerset is a very historical place, isn't it? It really to is. To be honest. Yeah. I mean, it was part of the Roman Empire until 406 AD. But, <laughs> 406 AD? How do you know that? Because he's a numismatist. A coin man to you and me. The biggest Roman hoard hmm. ever found in a single pot was in Somerset as well. Oh, was it? Really? Yeah. Maybe there'll be a denarius or two for Tim today. This time, our twosome are travelling the B roads of Somerset before auction in Devon. First port of call is Western Superman. Did you know that John Cleese was born in Western Superman? See? Yeah. His father's name was Reginald Cheese. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> Crackers. Well, it's certainly choppy on the Bristol Channel today, and Western Supermare is looking a little out of season. So, no digging sandcastles, but perhaps Christina will unearth buried treasure at Coles. We have arrived. Marvellous. Well, there we are. Good luck. Thank you. Go, go, go. Cool. All righty. See, see you later. Oh, hang on a second. It takes a while to get out. Give us a push. Do you want a push? Oh, there we are. God. Thank you. Have see you later. See you later. Have fun. Bye. Bye. Right. What have we got here, then? Look at this. This looks wonderfully gruesome. Gangrene of foot from cold. Ugh. Victorian prints from real patients, over 140 variations. Oh, this is like the uh, yeah, atlas of the diseases of the skin. Ugh. This will be wonderfully fascinating. So this is basically like Googling your injuries, isn't it, I suppose? Ooh, rashes, lupus, acne. Often medical aids and post-teaching aids such as this can become quite vintage and quite collectible, but I think that might be staying here. It's even a little bit gruesome for me, and that's saying something. Yeah, they give me the willies too. Go and find something less hideous, girl. Is fantastic. Do you know, I absolutely love this. This is an elm milking stool, and this has probably come straight out of an old dairy somewhere and it would have been somebody's best friend for years and years and years as they were milking good old Daisy on the farm every morning and night. These can be plant pot stands, you can sit your kids on them. I just love it. It's just full of ye oldie worldy charm, isn't it? 
I love it. Well, she would do. She's a farmer's wife. Ten quid. Time to grab a bargain. Matthew, Matthew, Matthew. Loving your milking stool. Like that very much. And it was priced up at ten pounds. Reason for that, we did see a little bit of worm on the bottom. Hey, it's, it's well, got friends. You expect it, don't you? Yeah, exactly. You Where else are they going to live? I think it's fab, and I'm very happy to pay you ten pounds for that. I think it's gorgeous. Um, just having a look over your shoulder. There's a chess set there. What's on that? Uh, there is a slight bit of damage on some of them, so it could be 45. 45. How many pieces have we got? Let's play. Not very good at chess. <laughs> <laughs> have we got a complete set? Hmm. Not okay. complete. I don't think it is. I do like it. I think the damage is a worry, and it's not named. Could you do any better on your 45? I can do it for 20. 20 pounds. Gosh. So £20 on the chess set and then £10 on the stool. Yes. Very, very happy at that, Matthew. Very happy. Thank you very much. That was a generous offer on the chess set. And with that, she's off! Cheerio! Check out your mate. Your move, Tim. Great name. Our man has headed ten miles east to the town of Axbridge, a tiny and ancient royal borough, which was once important enough to have its own mint. Tim's hoping to make a mint, too. So it's to rip the antiques and vintage he goes. Oh, I say, this is looking good. So these are what I think are early 20th century military boots, and most likely they're First World War officer boots. And there's kind of a sense of um, emotion when you hold these, because you can imagine the soldier wearing these, and they may have even been in the trenches, you never know. But you've got some lovely patinated leather here, and inside each boot, you've got these fantastic boot trees. The shoe trees themselves are by Peel & Co, and they supplied people like Charlie Chaplin. Looks like Tim fancies this pair. Time to talk to owner Lou. What sort of price are we looking at on those? Right, well, we've got 185 on them. OK. But I've had them quite a while. Right, OK. So, you know, what are you thinking? I'll leave it down to you. Uh, <laughs> how about 140? OK. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'll have a think about them. Okay. I'll ponder them, because yeah. I've, got, I've got to buy quite a few items, so okay. I just need to keep my powder dry, but I do absolutely love them. But thank you, I will keep looking round. No problem. I'll come back to them. Okay. Thanks. Splendid, but pricey. Maybe Sir can find something more off the peg. I recognise these. Lou? Yeah? I recognise these. <laughs> 42 pounds. There we are. Not bad. So is it Mendip auction? I think you were there, yeah. weren't you? Do you know Christine? who these belong to? No. Christina. No! <laughs> they look fantastic in the shop. They do, I love them. Yeah. Brilliant. Isn't that funny? Small yeah. world. It would be funnier if you bought them again. <laughs> right. Are we getting anywhere? This is a great pot, isn't it? It looks like it's sort of salt-glazed earthenware. <laughs> But it's a great size, isn't it? And I love how they've gone to the effort of just doing a little bit of hatched and striped decoration. It's quite cool. And it's got a real rustic look. And to be honest, the market would just be purely decorative, I think. Age-wise, I'm not too sure. It looks like it may be 19th century. It's certainly got some signs of age. Just a good decorative thing. Lou? Hi. Hello. Um, how much is this, can I ask? This is on for... for... Oh, let me have a look. Oh, there's a ticket in there. Let me have a look. It's on for 58. So we're doing a raffle. <laughs> <laughs> Number 58. OK, what do you think your best price on that would be? Can we go 28 quid? 30. Can you do 30? 30. Let's do 30. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Thank you. Lovely. 30 Thank pounds. You. Brilliant. One in the bag. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was almost half price. Very kind of you, Lou. Nice work, Red Trouser Man. Meanwhile, Christina has headed to the village of Cheddar, home of the largest gorge in the UK and a place synonymous with the word cheese. The first recorded reference to Cheddar cheese dates back to 1170, but our milkmaid is off to meet a modern-day cheese producer, John Spencer, underground. How cheesy is that? Cheddar accounts for more than 50% of all the cheese sold in Britain. Yeah. And that's because it's so versatile. Mm -hmm. 
It's made from really nutritious milk from this area. Mm -hmm. And the other big thing about it is, is that it keeps. Why am I in a cave? The cave is the perfect medium for maturing cheddar. And that's why we're going to have a look at it maturing. Oh, can we go and see it? Absolutely. OK, all right. Oh, my gosh, John, this is extraordinary. I and mean, we've got stalactites coming down from the ceiling. We're in a cave. And we've got mounds and mounds of cheese. Well, it is a lot of cheese, but not as much as King Henry II ordered for his household. About twice as much in one order, as you can see here. The constant temperature and 100% humidity in these limestone caves creates the perfect conditions for maturing cheddar, a process taking between six months and two years. So this is obviously the end of the process. This all looks wonderfully mature. What happens before this? Well, the best way to find out is to come into the cheese room and see for yourself. I imagine. Is that in the cave as well? Not in the cave, no. OK, so we need to go somewhere we else do. for that. OK. <laughs> Above ground, John's business is the only one in the village making cheddar in the traditional way. Here we are. Here we are again. Marvellous. Right, Wonder Woman. Give us a turn. <laughs> you can see right now, yeah. um, you've got curds and whey separated in this fat. Yeah, and you've drained off a lot of the whey, haven't you? We drain off a lot of the whey. You left us with the curds in the bottom. Nothing gets wasted. That gets fed to pigs. Yeah. And the curd is ready now for the next stage. Right. So if you come round, yeah. what you need to do okay. is break all this up. So you literally... So this is from... Oh, it's really warm, isn't it? It certainly is. It runs at about 40 degrees. Oh, my gosh. So we're breaking it all up to... Breaking it all up so that when we split it, the whey will keep running. So you're trying to get as much of the whey out as you possibly can to make yeah. it as dry as possible? Absolutely. Okay. Oh, ow! <laughs> So is what you're doing now, is it completely unique to the cheddar process or does it happen in all cheese manufacturing? No, this bit is unique to cheddar. Most of cheese making follows the same process. So you have milk, you heat it, you add a starter, you coagulate, and then you do something with the curd after coagulation and after cooking. Cheddar is the only cheese where cheddaring takes place, i.e. you pile the blocks up one on top of the other and they squeeze more and more way out. Quite rubbery, isn't it? The decline in traditional cheddaring dates from the war, when food rationing was introduced. The process of maturing cheese like cheddar was deemed wasteful and inefficient. So they developed a process called government cheddar, where all the milk that was available was put into central units and made into a type of cheddar. Right. It was made to a specific recipe, um, which wasn't, I think, particularly nice. All the reports of it are pretty dire. Really? Mm. So it was just purely a way of getting protein into people rather than it tasting anything like cheese. So it did a job rather than actually enjoying it. It absolutely did a job. So lots of chutney. <laughs> yes, lots of chutney. Rationing lasted until 1954, by which time the thousand-year-old way of making cheddar was disappearing. So would it be true to say, John, that the Second World War was sort of potentially responsible for almost making cheddar extinct? We certainly lost a lot of the skills that were used in making traditional cheddar. I think in the, the 80s, there were still very few artisan cheesemakers, and then there was a, an explosion of cheesemaking once the milk marketing board had disappeared, and now we make more cheeses than the French. Yum, yum, eh? No time for a plowman's for Tim, great name. He's got to find some antiques gold to get back in the game. Oh, do you know what? I'd love to find a really good coin. A dream coin for me would be like a, a Charles I Declaration half crown or something like that. Just something that holds an amazing piece of history. Good luck with that. <laughs> Next stop is Shepton Mallet, a town which produces cider. But he's not getting any of that just now either. Oh, no, he's off in search of a rare coin or two at Somerset Antiques and Interiors. And he still has £173.36 to spend. Uh -huh. Now, this is quite a smart mantle clock. 
What I love about it is that it's got this air balloon on top, which acts as the bell. Probably dates to around, I would assume, around 1900, something like that. Maybe slightly earlier, but it's just a bit of fun, isn't it? Let's see how much it is. How much do you think? Um, Owner Paul's your man. The you best on it is, is 60. 60 quid, OK. I really like that. But uh, I, I have got a bit of time on my hands, so... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to get that in there. So. OK, I'll give you another um, fiver then. <laughs> 50, 55. 55. 55 okay, is, okay. is the bottom on it. Do you know what, what I'm going to do? I'll put it back for a okay. minute. I'm going to carry on looking around, because I've only just got here. Yeah, no so, problem. Um, I'll come back to you. Okay. Thank you. Cheers, Paul. A potential purchase, then. What else? All right, all right. What's this, then? Ah, it's a frog on a ring. I've got a bit of a hunch that this might be unmarked gold. Quite often when you had a bit of jewellery made specifically for yourself, custom made, quite often it's not hallmarked. It might be worth buying it and getting the auction house to test it just to see if it is gold. Because if it is worth 50 to 100 pounds, it's priced at a tenner, so what can I lose, you know? Yeah, quite right. These cases are full of attractive shiny things. Right, we've got another bit of jewellery that's caught my eye here. What's this? So, oh, it's a... Nice little 19th century gilt metal, probably gilt brass, and agate brooch. And at 15 quid, what I'm going to do, put it with my frog ring, have a little mix lot. People love a good mix lot of jewellery in an auction. Let's hope they're charmed by your choices, then. But it looks like he's not done yet with these cabinets. Oh, I like these. What's this? So we've got a little Victorian red leather and silver-mounted cigarette box. What's nice about it is that it's silver-mounted, which adds a little bit of quality to it, I think. And you can see the hallmarks here in the corners. Ticket price is only £10. So what I'm thinking is that I could put it with this clock um, and have a nice little mix lot. Because, again, this is red leather. And what we've got here is quite a fun little thing. It's a Victorian travelling timepiece and it just clips away like that, so you can put it in your pocket and take it wherever you want to go. Yeah, another mix lot. He's on a roll with this. Time to talk money. Paul? Paul. Right. Um, I've got these two here. Now, that one's marked up at a tenner, okay. so that's fine. That's marked up at £45. Right. What would your best on that one be? 38. 38. OK. Just thinking the two together in a little mix lot. They look quite good together, wouldn't they? Yeah. Can we go 35 on that one? Go on. Yeah? Yeah, Perfect. 35. Brilliant. Ka-ching. £70, please. 25 for the ring and the brooch, and 45 for the travelling clock and cigarette box. And he seems to have forgotten all about that other lovely clock he fancied earlier. <laughs> and with Christina back on board, they're heading off into the wilds. Oh, oh my goodness. Isn't there um, a beast of Bodmin or a beast of Exmoor or a Somerset beastie? I've never heard of that. The Beast of Bodmin? Surely. Maybe it didn't get to Essex. No. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Lost in translation across the border. <laughs> yeah. Bodmin is in Cornwall. They'll have done their geography homework by tomorrow, I hope. Mighty night. And after their beauty sleep, they're on the road again. The sun is shining. Should we put the hood down? Ooh. Well, what about my hair? I'll turn into Bonnie Tyler. You'll be fine. Or Wurzel Gummidge, probably. <laughs> really? Come on, let's get you it You want to do it? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Well, what's the point of a soft top? If you can't feel the wind in your hair... There we are. Easy as that. Look at that. Perfect. Oh. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Oh. Right, Wurzel Gummidge hair. Let's go. Here we go. Whee! This is more like it. I wish I was there. Do you know where we are? I have no idea. Really? I am awful with directions. Oh, well, that's reassuring. I rely on modern technology every step of the way nowadays. It's fine, because we are experts in our field. We don't need directions, we can smell the engine. Yeah. <sighs> ah, yesterday it was the aroma of cheese that drew our dairy maid to a milking stool. Ten quid. Then she fancied a chess set. So she sets out today with £359.84p. Tim, meanwhile, clocked up two quirky mixed lots. Yeah, so yes. we're doing a raffle. <laughs> and took a punt on an earthenware pot, leaving him with £103.36, burning a hole in his pocket. Well, your challenge is to spend all of your money. Oh, don't do that. 
the challenge Duh. is on. I'm yeah. rubbish when it comes to pressure. Oh my god, I think I might go to meltdown. Don't do that to me. She's melting. And we're not in Kansas anymore. We're in Somerset. And having dropped off Tim, Christina's heading for elegant bath. If only we had time to wander in the footsteps of Jane Austen or take the waters at the spa. But we don't. Time for Christina to see what she can find at Michael Saffel Antiques. And here's the man himself. Hello, Vessa. Hello. Hello, Christina. Hello, Michael. Michael, lovely to meet you. Stocking your shelves there, I see. Yes, trying to get a bit of order into it, yeah. Oh, gosh, it's one... It's like a museum in here. It's amazing. Oh, that's kind. Thank you. Well, if you don't mind, I'm going to have a wander around, if that's OK. Please do, and just give me a call and I'll uh, leap to attention. Leap? Yes, of course. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Sounds very exciting. I might hold you to that. Right. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. Michael seems to be fond of an odd tin or two. I wonder whether he hides his biscuits in them. More tins. Maybe Michael was a grocer in a previous life. Victoria's glorious reign, 1837 to 1897. So this, this would have been, obviously, her jubilee year. Oh, look, the fourth bridge. I've done some antiques road trip filming there. That's quite fun. So this is all things that must have happened within her reign, within those 50 years. So we've got the development of the telegraph, the first steamer to cross the Atlantic, Travelling in ye good old days, obviously in 1837, and then travelling in 1897, you've got this wonderful steam train coming into a station here. That's fab, isn't it? Love that. Really love that. £775. Crumbs. £775. That would buy a lot of biscuits. Moving on. There must be something here within your budget. So this is um, a mounted emu egg, and these are probably silver plate, um, obviously with the emu egg on top, and it's just this wonderful grey surface, which is so fascinating, isn't it? The dark green eggs of the world's second largest bird fade over time. They were often carved and even made into inkwells and teapots. Fun. And look, we've got a little emu down here and a kangaroo there as well. So real sort of symbols of Australia. And this is probably Victorian, brought over obviously from Australia um, in that sort of fascination with travelling to faraway places. And they just always, without fail, just make me smile. They're so weird. It's such a sort of Antipodean fantasy. It's just bizarre, isn't it? Absolutely bizarre. But I just, I like it. I really like it. Time to call in Michael. Here he is. Oh. Leaping into action, as uh, yeah, promised. As promised, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, you've got £125 on that. Yeah. Is there any chance that we could sort of nudge it under the 100 uh, I suppose I could go to 95 Yeah, that's a good nudge under 100 really, isn't it? It is. Yes. Yeah. Well, I would be very grateful for that. Yeah. Thank you. Jolly good. 95 it is. Thank you so much for having me in your gorgeous shop. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, I'm feeling very, very educated. Thank you. <laughs> Brilliant. Nice to see you. Take bye -bye. care. Bye bye. Let's see how her best laid plan hatches. <laughs> Who writes this stuff? Right, my lover. Yes. Tim's saying hello to Bristol Harbour front this morning. Today, a place of leisure and pleasure for Bristolians and tourists alike. But not so very long ago, this mighty port thronged with maritime trade and industry. Tim is meeting Andy King, skipper of a small craft which was an ingenious solution to an ever-present waterfront hazard. Lots of warehouses and transit sheds around the edge, several rows of ships alongside, you know, there might be two or three of them berthed alongside each other. Yeah. With that sort of congestion, you've always got the... Uh, disastrous potential of fire. Yes, and I can imagine a lot of the boats and a lot of the harbour side buildings had components of wood or were made of solid wood. So um, how did we tackle that back then? The big problem is that they're fighting fires in, uh, in Bristol in what were originally medieval streets mm. and uh, they can't get down to the water with the land appliances and anything like as easily as they could from the water. The land appliances originally are all towed by horses so they take a while to get mm. to the fire. So a fireboat's a much better idea. Plus, 
you've got an inexhaustible supply of water right here that you can just pump straight from and yeah and it makes total sense right. doesn't it to Absolutely. pump the water straight out and uh, so from the 1880s you start to see a series of fire boats uh, built for service in the harbour here and it is taking tim to see the last of its kind built in 1934. well this is paranaut to introduce you to my crew hello gents Hello, how are you? <laughs> nice to see you. You're going to look after me on the boat. And they're off. Paranaut has a crew of three to man the boat and fight the fire. An occupational hazard was having to slip under the low bridges of the harbour, which were often unmanned or slow to open. So we're approaching the lowest bridge in the harbour. Quick, duck. If we get down as low as we can. Here we go. I'm getting all the way down. It's amazing how close it gets, isn't it? Wow. That can't be more than sort of four or five inches in some places. Wow. Oh, we got amazing. During the war, when night after night the Luftwaffe rained bombs on the city, Paranaut was on duty with her brave firemen. Crews on land were also able to battle blazes by attaching hoses to her powerful pumps. Bristol was one of the worst blitzed cities in the country and for the best part of nine months there were constant air raids every couple of nights, some of them quite severe. The site that Emshed occupies now, where she normally lives these days, was completely destroyed. And there's a fantastic painting of the big granary that was on that site burning right. down with a little fireboat down in the bottom squirting water up wow. at it and that's Pyronaut. She fought lots of fires at lots of different places. Obviously lives were saved, lots of property was saved, a lot of buildings were saved too and uh, it, it's a really important part of the city's history. Oh, the bridge. <laughs> Get my head taken off. Paranaut was retired in 1973, but in her heyday, she could pump 2,000 gallons of water in a minute. All right, here we go. We're going. Whee! There they go. Look at that. You wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of that, would you? No. Unless you were on fire, of course. Just bring that back to stop, they'll turn the pumps off for you. Oh, well, that was fun. And we didn't get wet either. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, Christina's out in the fresh air too. And she seems to be enjoying the ride. It's great when the lid's up, but when the lid is down, I mean, what's not to love? This is amazing. She's making her way to Bristol to rendezvous with Tim at their last shop of the day. And it looks like she's going to be in the advanced guard at Odds and Todds. Great name. This enormous shop is packed to the gunnels. Interesting reading material. Dear Bob, from Frank, some live for love. I live for you. 18th of February, 1940. Precious words from wartime, but sadly not valuable at auction. What else? Ah, oh, that's quite cool, isn't it? Look at that. A.H. Bustle and Sons, house decorators, plumbers, etc. Huh? <laughs> house decorators, plumbers, etc. It's quite ambiguous, isn't it? Etc. What else can you do? It's amazing. Oh my goodness. Ooh! That is quite a serious lump of slate, worryingly. There's no price on it. But I love this, like, established 50 years. That's fantastic. I love that. Whilst Christina ponders the possibilities, it appears our man Tim has arrived and is wasting no time delving into the stock. Bottoms up, old bean. In the Georgian period, sugar tongs were used a lot. Now, there are quite a lot of these around, but I just think they're so charming. Made of solid silver, and you can see the hallmark in here, and it's made during the reign of George III, who reigned from 1760 to 1820. So they're a couple of hundred years old, solid silver, 
And what's the ticket price? 12 quid. I mean, it just shows that antiques can be so affordable. So, do you know what? I'm just going to buy them because I like them. Very decisive. Now, while he roots around for a last purchase, Christina is heading for the counter. Oh, my goodness, that's heavy. I'm Christina. I'm Les. Les, lovely to meet you, Les. Now, I have been wandering around your vast shop, yes. um, and I found this. How much is on it, Les? 25. 25? Yes. Really? OK. I like the sound of that for £25. I think there's a lot of work gone into that for that amount of money, so at £25, I am very happy. Okay. Now, as we've been chatting, I clearly have been giving you my undivided attention, but I've just seen that sign down there, that yeah. super fine Franklin shag tobacco sign. That's pretty cool, isn't it? It's different, isn't it? It is. Is it for sale? Yes. Is it? Yeah. That's quite early. What's that? Pre-1900? Yeah, so it says so, yeah. That's Definitely. fantastic. How much is on that, Les? £60. £60, pounds. OK. Yeah. Brilliant. So it's £60 pounds and 25 so £60, 70 £85. Pounds. Mm -hmm. Would I be able to just nudge you to 80 Senior boner two, yes. Brilliant. You're a gentleman. Thank you very much. What a superstar. Right, let's give you some readies. And then I have a feeling that we're going to need a screwdriver. There we go. 20 40 60 80 pounds. Thank you very much. Right. Where's this screwdriver then, Les? Shall we get it off the door? Yes. 80 pounds spent there. Now, all she needs is a screwdriver. Don't be all. All righty. There we go. And her work is complete. Tim's still on the hunt, though. Upstairs, downstairs, inside, outside. Maybe he can't see the wood for the trees. Time to call the antique experts helpline. Um, I was just wondering, do you still have that um, clock with the balloon on? Ah, he's calling Paul in Shepton Mallet. What was your price on that? I can't quite remember. 55. Do you mind putting it to a side? I'd like to buy it if that's all right. Lovely. Thanks so much. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Good. We've done the deal. Well, I never saw that coming. He bought yesterday's balloon clock for £55. Very clever, because that's rare. So, all that's left to do is to pay for the silver sugar tongs and away we go. It's home time and thoughts are turning to the auction. I'm so pleased about that clock. So you lost last time. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 1-0 <laughs> yeah. to the Trevanian. Let's make it 1-0. Oh, fighting. The game oh. is on. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, it is. After some shut-eye. Good morning, Exeter. Once one of the furthest outposts of the Roman Empire, yes, the one that began its fall in 406 AD. Numismatist Tim almost certainly also knows that more than a thousand Roman coins have been found here. But it's auction gold we're after today. Oh, this looks smart, doesn't it? Very smart. Mm. I'm excited for this, aren't you? No, no, this Why is not? the bit that fills me with the heebie jeebies. I, I really just. Oh. I love it, it's all the ups and downs. And... Well, hopefully more ups than downs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thank you. Our hosts are Beerns, Hampton and Littlewood, where a fine array of wares is waiting to go under the hammer. Christina spent £205 on her five lots. Oh, I'm quite jealous about this. Christina's done a really good thing buying this. I love enamelled signs. I think they're really decorative. Looks like it's been used as air rifle practice, sadly, but still got a good look about it. And I think it's a brilliant thing and something perfect for your man cave. I wonder if Mr Pistachio trousers as a man cave. <laughs> he parted with a total of £150 on his five lots. It's ridiculous that you can buy a solid piece of silver that's 200 years old for £12. I mean, what a great buy these are. I don't think they're going to make him a stonking profit, but a good, solid buy. I like those. Our auctioneer today is Brian Goodison Blanks. What does he think? 160 seated there. The clock is rather interesting because of the ballooning interest on that. It's late 19th century, probably produced on the continent. It's a pressed tin case. Not a great deal of quality to it, but the interesting thing is the gilt balloon to the top, which will be of great interest to balloonists. Obviously, the favourite piece is going to be the emu egg on the stand because it's an interesting piece. It's decorative. It's the sort of thing that stands out and is unusual, uh, and I think it should do very well. Time for Brian to grab his gavel and for our experts to take their seats. Oh, 
Oh, right, here we are, another auction. <laughs> right, they seem to have got used to snuggling up together in a small space. <laughs> First up is Tim's yellow metal frog ring, which turned out not to be gold, together with the agate brooch. And interest here, 10, 12, 15, 15 pounds is bid. 18 now? What's your pay for? Uh, 25 pounds. At 18 pounds then, 20 or no? Come on. At we can go pounds, more. Come on. Note. Come on. At 20 somebody. then. I'm oh, selling them. No. At 20. Come on. Oh dear. Oh. I leapt frog backwards. <laughs> Is that a thing? <laughs> Unleap frog backwards. I've unleapt. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid you did. Five pounds lost there. Oh well. They were I nice things. They were. I hope whoever bought, bought it will wear it. A nice thought. Now it's time for Christina's elm milking stool. And some bids are already with the auctioneer. And interest here, 15, 18, 20, 20, oh, 22 well now, done. 22, 25, 28. Because what's my pay for 10 pounds? pounds. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Well done. My commission's back in at 25 pounds, looking for eight. Can you all need a three-legged stool? Of course you do. <laughs> Everybody does. Three-legged cows. At 25 pounds of meat, 28 or no? At 25 pounds then. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Fantastic. Fantastic. 15 pounds profit to our dairy maid. Come on, Tim, catch up. Come on. I need to catch up here, big time. Yeah. Next up is Tim's cigarette box and travelling timepiece. Time to make some money, eh? There's interest from internet bidders. At 10, 12, 15, 18 pounds, 20, 20 and a half, 22 now. In the room, it's in the room. We're halfway 22, there. 25, 28, 28, I'm out, 28. Oh. Keep going. Okay. It's like me running a marathon. It's like really, really good. I'm going to go. Surely. At 28 pounds, then. That's 28. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, indeed. Seventeen pounds up in smoke. It's time to move on. It's fine. Don't worry. Yes, no, it's fine. Yeah, don't burst into tears. Next, smoking sign, bit chipped. Do you know what their strap line was? No. Franklin's fine shag. Always good to the end. <laughs> it's a little bit warm, but aren't we all? Uh, what do I say to that? Any, I am after today. At 10, 12, 15, 18, 20, 20 pounds is here. 22, it's got to be more 25, than that. 28, 30, 32, 35, 38, it's got a long way 40, to go. 42, 45, 48. It's, it's like a proper auction. Pounds, eight or no, 45 pounds at 45. Oh, and Franklin. Oh. 45. Oh. Oh. He tried hard on that, though. Not always good to the end. No. Oh, disappointment. This one wasn't. <laughs> No, it peaked prematurely. <laughs> bye bye, fifteen pounds. Oh, oh. oh well. We move on. Indeed. Time for Tim's Georgian sugar nips. One lamp or two. Interest with me at ten pounds with these. Ooh, come, on. come on, big money. Come on. At ten pounds then. Twelve I have. My commission's out then at twelve. Oh. Fifteen now. At twelve Solid pounds then. Sugar tongs. No, 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 these should not be this cheap. What are you going to do at twelve pounds then? Fifteen or no? All done at 12. That's sort of what I paid for them. Well, no, darling, that isn't sort of what oh, no, That is actually yeah, what you paid for them. Paid for them. <laughs> yeah. That's the fact, I'm afraid. But it's not a loss. They were lovely, they weren't they? Yeah, I like this. Oh. Christina's moved now. It's the chess set. 20, 20 pounds commission bid, what? 22 in the room. Oh. I'm out then with you at 22, 25 oh, yeah, now. So got a at 22 that. pounds in the room, 25 That's elsewhere. Yeah. At 22, Only in slight. Standard, oh. quite sure that There's loads of different pieces in there. I don't know what they are, but they're... <laughs> oh. Look, you didn't lose much, did you? I think that was all right, to be honest. She didn't lose anything, actually. <laughs> she made two pounds, so checkmate. Stop looking so happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's yet to make any money. So it's understandable. Maybe he'll get lucky with his earthenware pot now. Forty pounds is bid here in commission. Forty-two, forty-five, forty-eight, fifty, five, sixty, five. I'm clawing back some profit. Come, Come on. on. With you seated, sir, at sixty-five, looking for seventy now against you. Yes. Quite sure that sixty-five. Yours at sixty-five, sir. So I've doubled up. Sixty-five in the middle, then. Yay! Fantastic. I've made a profit at Yay! last. <laughs> <laughs> and more than doubled your money. Well, things are looking up. Oh, I'm pleased that's, got, that's yeah. gone for a good amount of money. Well done. Good mm. spot. Very good spot. Thank you. You've impressed me. Well, that's the main thing, isn't it? But will her slate plaque impress the buyers next? I love that. House decorators, yeah. plumbers, etc. Etc. Yeah. We do everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
And starting here with me at 18, 20, 22, 25, 28, 30, oh, 32, we're going 32, at. 32, oh, well done. 35, 35 well pounds done. is bid. 38, Another profit. 38, 40, oh. 42, 45, 48, 50, 2, 55, 58. At 58 pounds then, never knew you were strictly What is pounds. going on? The bidders this love you today, ridiculous. don't they? <laughs> 60, you know. Fantastic. At 58 pounds then. Well done. Wow. Congratulations, oh, really another cool. profit. Yeah. Well done. Oh, I'm, I'm really glad it made a profit because yeah. I, I really did I really did love it. And it loved you back. £38 pounds worth. Oh, I'm really oh. pleased about that. Yeah. yeah. Really pleased. Very good. Now, Tim's last chance to take off. It's the balloon clock. Oh, £15 pounds is bid. At 15, oh, we've got a long way to go. 18, 22, 25, 28. 28, 30, 2. We can go, we can go. Go on, sir, it's good. Let me go good. up. He loves it. At 32 yeah. pounds, at 32. Five and elsewhere. At 32 it pounds, was a five and elsewhere. At 32 then. Oh, oh no. Maybe that was the proverbial lead balloon. He's down another 23 pounds. What a shame. I would have bought that for myself. Would you? Your house is going to be very full uh, in a very short period one. of time. Time to crack on with the last of our lots today. It's Christina's emu egg. And interest here with me at 50, 60, 70, 80, it's climbing. 90, 100, and 10, 120. It's taking off. 130, 140, 140 pounds with me at 140. Well, that's a surprise. 170, 180. Oh, this is silly. I don't think they've got the right lot. This isn't my lot. Must be a double yoker. Are out. 220, 230, 240, 250, 260. What? 270, no, don't 280, be daft. 290, 300. We're off. <laughs> 310, 320, 330, no. 340, 350, 360. 370, 380, 390, crazy. 420. At 400 pounds, <laughs> okay, so that's 400 pounds. You quite sure, sir? At wow. 400 pounds, you're all done now. Sir. Well done. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh my God. Ooh, really? Well done. That's amazing. That, that really, that is amazing. Oh, that I am is impressed. amazing. Well, who would have thunk that? She has quadrupled her cash. The thing I love about auction, and what I still find so completely fascinating, is there are no two auctions the same. It's mm. such a journey, and you actually never know what something is going to make until the fall of that hammer. Well, it's proved that today. Yeah, mind blowing, isn't Amazing. it? Amazing. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry that yours didn't make more. Look, it wasn't excellent, but getting better. Yeah. Getting better. Back to buying. Mm. Mm. That makes me See what we can find. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Oh, brave spirit. Tim set out with great expectations, but it was a bleak auction house for him today, and after fees, he winds up with £165 and 10p. No hard times for Christina, though. After auction costs, that egg laid her a whopping £635.84. We declare that our mutual friend is the winner this time. Oh, Timothy, Timothy, Timothy. You're, come go. on, shoulders up, pride, and I want to see you rising like a phoenix from the ashes, OK? Dramatic. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> come on, onwards and upwards.